Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Fresh Crits of Melbourne. We are back at St Kilda Cycling Club's hot diggity dog circuit. It's been a while. It's been a year, in fact, to the day, according to Strava, that I was on this circuit. And... A little bit has changed. Essentially, it's still the same circuit. It's a little bit longer, and you can see with the huge barriers on the left-hand and right-hand side of the road here, they're gearing up for the Formula One down at Albert Park, ladies and gentlemen. This is pretty awesome to be racing on a circuit where some Netflix celebrities are going to be going around and round and round in circles in the coming weeks. But look, if you haven't been here before, I record, edit, and analyze crit videos, basically. So if you do like this stuff, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It does the channel a whole bunch of favors. It allows me to put more and more videos up with the dream of having some drones boosting around the course if I was cycling, let me. So needless to say, let's get stuck into this race and we'll go straight to some of the action. So we're just over 27 minutes into this race. We're coming into that bottom corner and you can hear by the squealing of brakes and the shaking of head of Pat Drapak in the rear cam, this is not fast enough coming into this corner. But actually it is quite hard to hit this corner with speed and keep a nice solid line with everybody around you. But the most important thing that I've picked up with doing this bottom corner a few times is to make sure you're following the wheel in front of you, especially on the downwind part of this course. And no matter how fast or slow you're entering that corner, making sure that you're snapping onto the wheel in front of you is most important. And fortunately for me, I've got Pat right in front of me at the moment. He's an absolute hitter, ends up winding up second in this race. So when he goes, you've got to go. He gets out of the saddle, jumps in a sprint. You can see there's a group of riders up the road. And now all of a sudden there's a surge in the bunch to bring that back which is actually a good idea considering there's probably eight riders with a few more bridging across. That can actually be quite threatening, but even though there's already been a few attacks and breaks in this race, nothing has been able to stick. The group up the road has not been able to get organized enough to stay away, and we're gonna have a look a little bit at that later. So right now we're in the tailwind part of the course, and yes, by staying really aero and close to the wheel, you are gonna be getting a drafting benefit, even if you're getting a pretty hefty tailwind. So it's my turn to get on the front. Now, mind you, I'm definitely not the strongest guy in this group, and I've made many estate mistakes before that I've sat on the front too long, pushed way too many watts, and end up blowing up later in the race. So it's really important you wanna keep short, fast turns, to ensure that you can save those bickies to the end of the race where it's most needed. So you can see here Tom Lombardi's pulled through and there's no need for me to really sprint onto this wheel because we're coming into that top corner. So what I'm gonna do is break hard and late and it'll allow me to fall back onto Lombardi's wheel whilst keeping pace. So I jump on the anchors really hard there, hold a nice pace and there you go. I've been able to pick up one, maybe two bike lengths just by breaking a little bit later. However, as we come out of that corner, after putting in a bit of an effort, Tom Lombardi pulls off. I asked the question why, since his teammate's not up the road, it's a group effort to bring it back and he's not too happy with what I said. But, meanless to say, we still got an effort to do, we still got a job to do here, so I eventually look behind, I flick the elbow, and he does eventually come through. He knows the situation at hand. I'm not too sure why he pulls up. Please comment below if you give me the reason. I managed to sit in his wheel and we are once again single file doing what we can to chase this one back. 45 kilometers an hour in a headwind. It's then Pat Lane absolutely sends it. Josh soon follows, Lombardi sees the threat and jumps on that move to get hopefully what is an easy draft, but he's been put out of position, chasing pretty hard, looking behind to see the damage that has been done. But because we're in the headwind section, no one really wants to work so hard. Everyone's fairly tired. There's been a few consecutive hard efforts there. The group has now spanned across the road. Everybody sits up. We barely touch the pedals and we're back to square one again. That's all happened in just under a lap. And this is basically what it was the entire crit. 
I've been tail gunning for a little bit now, but it's uh, time that the heart rate's dropped. I've got some freshness back into the legs and I've decided to burn a tiny little match to move up into this race knowing full well we're coming at 37 minutes into this race, only 20 minutes left. Um, I wanna get closer to the front of the race, especially coming into this corner so I'm not caught so far back. I kind of dive bomb Pat Lane there, I'm sure he appreciates that one. And I find myself on a really strong rider's wheel by the name of Ryan Schilt. We enter this corner. I take a wider line, but manage to keep a pretty decent speed of about 25 kilometers an hour through that corner. And then we absolutely send it out of it. You can see one of the cycle speed guys has jumped on the gas, followed straight by Ryan's wheel. And if you're stuck on Ryan's wheel or any of these hitters, you've just got to go. You can't hesitate. And I'll touch on a little bit about that later on. But when Ryan goes, I've got to get super aero to stay in his draft. He's doing whatever he can to gutter me, riding so closely to the Grand Prix um, barriers there. I feel like an F1 driver. And we finally make it into the break. And we've left a huge gap behind. But none of them seem to be working. Everybody's sitting up not wanting to contribute. There's a lot of looking around saying, you know. And you've got to ask the question is, why is no one willing to work? There's probably too many in this break to do any work but it's this rider here that says stuff you guys I'm getting on with it and he just sends it he just absolutely launches it straight up the road and no one's willing to chase and what you'll notice a little bit later on he gets a really good gap he stays away for a couple of laps and that's probably you know he would probably win the most aggressive rider in this because he's been able to stay away for the longest amount of time meanwhile the rest of us are pushing 12 watts we're going 39 kilometers an hour. So obviously with that, the rest of the peloton is caught up. So essentially you can now chalk that up to a bit of a wasted effort. But you know, it's one of those things, if you didn't do it, who knows what would have happened. You would have been, you know, kicking yourself if, uh, if you missed an opportunity like that. And that's the thing that separates, you know, the B graders from the A graders in terms of fitness is being able to jump on those spontaneous moves when the opportunity presents itself. If you're not fit enough to do that, you're just gonna be shot out the back or you have to be smart enough to pick up when that right move is. And that's what I think is the hardest thing with crit racing. But enough of this, we'll skip a little bit further forward in this one where I find myself all on my own. We're just coming into 43 minutes into this race, essentially just under 10 minutes to go and one rider's up the road and I think to myself, well, no one's really doing anything. I'll just gently roll off the front, hoping. And you can see I look behind, hoping that someone's gonna join me, but everyone looks and obviously thinks that fresh crits is no threat and um, let me dangle out there. So essentially I'm now all by myself and that's where we're at. And now I'm stuck in dead man's land because I don't really want to do a massive effort to bridge across that guy in front of me. I think there's one more person up the road as well. Um, now I'm just stuck in this no man's land where I'm pushing, you know, just very much over threshold and just hoping that somebody's gonna come across. What do you do in this situation? Do you just accept the fact that it's not happening? Do you jump on the brakes and or sit up and wait for the group to come back? Or do you think I should have sent it across the road to that guy? Leave some comments below, I'd love to hear your thoughts. But what we'll do, we're gonna just fast forward this little bit into where a little bit more action happens. So um, yeah, keen to hear what your thoughts are. I'm eventually quote unquote caught and a group of guys uh, pretty much come over with quite aggressively and I'm thinking, okay, I've got to get onto this. You can see Aiden in the background with potentially the most elite dive bomb I've ever seen sprints into that corner. I didn't see him there till really, really late, <laughs> nearly bump into him. That's absolutely fine. We stayed upright, no dramas there, but he sends it and Aiden's in really, really good form at the moment. It's the same thing that happened with Ryan earlier. When you see a hitter go, you cannot hesitate. And that brings me up to a point here where we spoke about earlier around that hesitation. I hesitate up here. You can see Aiden goes on, but I see Josh here and I'm thinking, oh, maybe Josh is gonna catch on. But I hesitated, I shouldn't have. And now a gap has opened up behind me. I'm having to spike up to 400 watts in order to stay in the wheels. Fortunately for me, another rider in the yellow kit here manages to bridge across and I'm able to jump into his wheel to get me across to the group in front. But once again, 
The same sort of situation happens. Everyone looks around, no one wants to do any work, even though we have a really substantial gap behind me. You know, this is the situation. Imagine if these guys were able to pull turns and we all rolled through, this group would 100% stay away. It's got the right dynamic. We've got someone almost out of every team in this break. So this would have been a really threatening one. I just don't think anybody realized the situation at hand. And of course, this meant that eventually this group was caught and it was all back to square one. So what we might do is we'll skip forward into like the, the dying laps and we'll break down the race from there. Stay tuned. So we are coming in to one lap to go and everybody is feeling a little bit edgy. You can see on the left, the race commissaire is holding up with one lap as he rings the bell and now it race is really on we all come into this corner three maybe four bikes wide it's so important to hold your line through here the last thing you want to do is get chopped or lose your wheel to the person in front of you i come out of that corner i'm sitting like you know with only 10 riders behind me the majority of the race is up the road so it's important right now that i try to find any small opportunity in order to move up in this race i'm currently sitting okay though position wise not great but i'm sheltered from the wind and that's really really important remember we've got about two kilometers to go in this race so that gives us enough time to still move around if need be i want to stay sheltered i want to stay hidden ideally just a little bit further up so what i'm thinking now is if i can just stay in this sheltered area stay safe obviously and slowly move up the bunch um, and hopefully when we get down to that bottom corner be in the top 10 wheels that'd be perfect for me as you can see we've got aiden butterjig coming in in the rear cam now and he always manages to find himself in really really good positions and really if there's someone like that you're racing with and you know they're always getting on the podiums follow them that's the best way you're going to learn so i see him going moving up and i decide well if he's moving up then i should be moving up as well so now I'm thinking, let's get onto his wheel. Let's try to find an open spot where I can move up in this race. And that opportunity comes here. Now I'm left with uh, two choices here. Do I go left or do I go right? I stay sheltered, I go left and keep in the draft. We've got Pat here in front of me. We spoke about him earlier. He's always finding himself on the podium. Ryland goes long. He launches um, an attack straight up the uh, outside here to move himself up. We're coming on to just over a kilometer left in this race. We're coming into that bottom corner. Now it's a time to burn a map. The speed dropped a little bit, but I'm having to push out some big numbers in order to move up. But again, it's just a match that I'm willing to burn in order to move up in this race. Forbes, he thinks the same thing, and he's always finding himself on podium. So I follow him. You can see all the hitters are up the front of this race. Aiden rounds that corner first. I, oh, that's a pretty, yeah, that's a dive bomb. And fortunately enough, keep it upright, even though we're going into the water. You can see Ryan here snapping onto Derek's wheel. And here we have, in bridge lane colors, Luke Burns launching a big attack to get along to Aiden. And if you're gonna go, you're gonna go. And even though the distance calculator is a little bit wrong, we're about a kilometer out, I've gotta go. I'm caught in no man's land once again. I'm looking around thinking, do I stay with him? Do I pull through? Do I stay with? I'm not too sure. Really, I should have stayed with, but you can see behind me the rest of the peloton has caught up. And now, essentially, I'm now a lead out man. This is my life now. I've got no other choice. I'm trying to create some separation, but it just ain't happening. I'm giving it absolutely everything, but I'm now a lead out man. I'm essentially Michael Murkov trying to do whatever I can in order to keep the speed up high enough. I've accepted my fate and this is where it is. I've already burnt my match. I could have maybe have fallen back and snapped onto another wheel, but where racing against Melbourne's best crit racers, so I wouldn't have, wouldn't have had enough to, to do anything there. Here comes a final sprint. You can see Sam Eddy, teammate of Luke Burns, on the front. He's gonna be given the perfect lead out to the three riders in front, and he ends up winning this race, actually, whilst the rest of us just roll in with the bunch. I finish with the bunch. Well, I came last, I guess. There's no one behind me, but look, I'm gonna walk away taking a lot from this race you know the confidence that i can stay with the group that i can put in moves go on attacks 
I will chalk that up as a win for myself. Maybe, maybe I'll be in the top 10 the next time around. Thank you again for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoy this stuff. If you see yourself in the vid, chuck us a oh, comment, man, give us a like, way. thumbs up, I share it with your mates, subscribe. You know the drill. I'll see you next week. And guys, if you like this one, go and check out the St Kilda Crit video from last year. I'll have it up the top there. Enjoy, and I'll see you next time. Ciao.